Check lang po ako ng audio kung naririnig po ako loud and clear. 
can we give a thumbs up or say yes po sa ating chat box before I proceed? There you go. Thank you. Spotlight ko lang po yung app. Okay, again, good morning everyone. Mabuhay. So, please don't forget to sign up the attendance form for today's session. Yung link po natin is in the chat box. Requirement po ito para makatanggap po tayo ng ating certificate of attendance for today's session. Okay? So, along with that, uh, you must complete at least 80% of the webinar time and also complete the evaluation form na ibibigay ko po later on towards the end of our discussion. Okay, so we're still with our Destination in Focus series for domestic tourism. And this time, I'm going to take you to the island of Mindanao. That's the energy. <laughs> and we will start our Mindanao leg with Zamboanga Peninsula. Okay, so we still have the same outline, just like the previous session. We will be talking about geographical division. We primary mode of transportation of how we're going to get into Zamboanga Peninsula, the cuisines, and also a run-through of the top destinations and attractions. Okay. Na, nawala ako doon sa nag-personal message. Ang puti daw ng mukha ko. Ang puti ba? Happy Foundation. Sige, Happy Foundation Day po kung gano'n. <laughs> okay. So, moving on. Ayan. Okay, so before we go to the core of our discussion this morning, panuorin po muna natin ang short clip. Ayan. About Zamboanga Peninsula. Today I woke up inside a kaleidoscope. Surrounded by mesmerizing patterns and vibrant shades. Golden colors you can practically taste. Endless stretch of powdery pink sand. Rainbow vessels ride in gentle waves. A technicolor dream just bursting at the seams. With ever changing hues and views. But no fail, always a whole lot of fun. Okay, so Zampen is numerically designated as Region 9. So ito yung nasa una, una sa listahan ng mga regions sa Mindanao. It is formerly the Western Mindanao region and it is the smallest region in the island of Mindanao. Now the, the regional center for Zamboanga Peninsula is Pagadian. Okay, but before it was Zamboanga City. Okay, although uh, today it is still Zamboanga City that is the cultural, economic, and educational center of Zamboanga. Why? Right? The regional office of the Department of Tourism is still located in Zamboanga City. Okay, so Zampen is considered as the most colorful region in the Philippines because of the uh, uh, different cultures present here. We have, of course, the, 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 the Philippine culture, and then we have here the Moro, and also uh, we have a uh, significant influence of Spanish culture in here. Ito naman din natin sa kanila dialect, wherein they are using this Chabacan, which is a Spanish based creole. Okay, kaya kung natawag din the Latin Asia, Latin city of Asia ang Zamboanga City. Okay, so this is the location of Zamboanga Peninsula in the Philippine Archipelago. 
Again, the second photo is a closer look at the administrative division of Zamboanga. That leads us to the discussion of administrative division. So Zampen is composed of only three provinces, provinces okay, plus one highly urbanized city and one independent component city. That is Isabela City of Basila. So you might be wondering bakit may bahagi ng Basila na kasama sa Zamboanga Peninsula. Okay? So we'll talk more about that that in natin sa portion ng Isabela City. Now let's start the list with our first province which is Zamboanga del Norte and the capital of which is the city of Dicolo. Okay, so Zamboanga del Norte or Zam North has 25 municipalities in two cities. Kaya tinawag din or ang nickname din ng Zamboanga del Norte is the twin city province. Okay, so this is the largest province in Zamboanga Peninsula. Okay? So nandito ang uh, Ang, ang Dipolog City nga, which is the capital, or tinatawag din Orchid City, and the city of Dapitan, which is also nicknamed as the Shrine City, okay? because it was the place where Dr. Rosario Rizal, our national hero, was exiled. So that is, ay, yeah, so ito yung mapa, ang Zamboanga del Norte. The next province is the province of Zamboanga del Sur and the capital of which is the city of Pagadian. So Zamboanga del Sur has 26 municipalities in one city, that's the capital. So Zamboanga del Sur is statistically grouped with the city of Zamboanga. However, um, it is geographically separated. If you are looking for a laid-back and a more countryside experience in Zamboanga Peninsula, then your good province should be Zamboanga del Sur. So the capital naman, Pagadian, is known or nicknamed as the Little Hong Kong of the South, not because of, of skyscrapers, not because of uh, the urban setting, but because of the quality of Pagadian City, which I will be showing you also later on sa so Tama Traction. The third province is the province of Zamboanga City, and the capital of which is the municipality of Ipil, with only 16 municipalities bordering, of course, Zamboanga del Norte, Zamboanga del Sur. Um, isa ito sa mga pinaka young or pinaka bago ng provincia ng Pilipinas. Uh, it was just created in early 2000s, uh, 2001 to be exact. Uh, kinuha lang siya from Zamboanga del Sur. Okay, so yung isang district ng Zamboanga del Sur yun, ginawa siya ng isang Then, the fourth uh, unit here is the highly urbanized city of Zamboanga. So, again, sabi ko kanina na this is nicknamed as the Latin city of Asia because of the heavy influence of the Spaniards in here, particularly sa kanilang dialecto. So this is again the commercial and industrial center of Zamboanga Peninsula region. So Zamboanga City is also the sixth most populous uh, city in the Philippines and the second most populous city in Mindanao, next to the city of Davao. So here, makakakita pa rin tayo ng mga Spanish era forts, mga old churches, old mosques, uh, spacious parks, um, and heritage sites, historic plazas, even their city hall okay, is uh, historic in nature. Ayong kanilang uh, pink beach in Santa Cruz also. Yeah. So Zampen uh, was selected by the Department of Tourism as the flagship destination here in Zamboanga Peninsula no, to promote the whole region. And it has seen a continuous growth over time in terms of arrivals, kahit pa ng siege no, noong 2012, I think, or 2013, Zamboanga City. So that's Zamboanga City. Zamboanga City alone can at least require you at least two days yeah, or three days most para maikot ang buong Zamboanga City. And the last unit for Zamzampen is the city of Isabela. So, yun na nga, you might be wondering, bakit may uh, bahagi ng Basila na kasama sa Zamboanga Peninsula? Now, during the creation of ARMF, the Autonomous Region of Boston, Mindanao, 
So, in-offer ang membership sa or inclusion sa buong province ng Basilan. However, Oops. Uh, balik tayo. Um, however, even if Basila is a majority Muslim or Muslim majority province, ang Isabela City and Lamitan City, okay, which is the current capital, ay Christian dominated areas. So, uh, the city of Basila and Isabela rather opted to not to be not a part of Hanggang sa naging bar na siya based BARM, they still chose to be part of sa buwan ng Pilipinas. So, ano ba? Yung provincial services ng Isabela City, yung buka pa rin nila sa Sasila, yung provincial services ng Isabela City, ay pinutuhan na nila sa buwan ng Let's move to the transportation. How do we get in to Zamboanga, Peninsula? So the primary airport that serves the region is the Zamboanga International Airport. So for a time, we have a flight to flights to Saba, pero hindi rin siya nagtuloy-tuloy. With other airports that you may consider flying into is Pagadian Airport in Zamboanga del Sur and Dipolog Airport in Zamboanga del Sur. Now, if a tourist wish to go to Zamboanga City via ferries, okay, they are being served also by, by uh, to go from Luzon and also ferries from Sulu Islands and internationally from Sandakan in Malaysia. Then also, um, a smaller port in the Pitan has frequent ferries from Maguete and Cebu. Okay, significant ang arrivals then sa Zamboanga International Airport because this uh, Zam Airport will be your uh, jump off to uh, Tawi-Tawi if you will be taking a flight. Pero pagka mag-ferry, doon pa sa Zamboanga. So, nandito ang mga ferries papuntang Basilan, papuntang Sulu, at papuntang Tawi-Tawi. Okay? So, yon. Let's move on to the top uh, cuisines of uh, Zamboanga Peninsula. Now, Zamboanga City particularly, okay, has a very festive cuisine, has a very colorful, again, a very diverse as the culture of the region. Now, because of the location of Zamboanga Peninsula, Zamboanga City particularly, Sulu Sea, you can get here a variety of seafoods. And also, with the rich history of Zamboanga City as a Spanish settlement, very significant ang Hispanic flavors sa kanilang food preparation. That's why um, Zamboanga, and also the presence of Moros here added up to the flavors. Um, Zamboanga Peninsula. That's why the region is also called as one of the most flavorful regions in the Philippines. Actually, Zamboanga Peninsula has this program, Sabores de Zamboanga, wherein uh, they solely promote the cuisine of uh, Zamboanga, particularly Zamboanga City. Yeah, so it's just a separate or a different package other than visiting top attractions and destinations. So let's start off our list with, of course, the famous Kuracha of uh, Alabar's restaurant. Okay. So Kuracha, okay, hindi lang naman siya kay Alabar's, okay, but uh, Kuracha is actually a deep sea species of uh, crab that are found in the waters surrounding Zamboanga City. Okay, over time, it became a specialty dish of Alabar's restaurant, which is a famous restaurant in Zamboanga City. Now, the seafood or this seafood is topped with their signature uh, signature alabar sauce which is a delicious mix of coconut uh, milk spices and yeah other spices that you may want to put everything on it so that's coracha the second one is our paella again being colonized by the spanish so several hispanic flavors have been infused into their uh, dishes and one of which is the paella so it is seasoned with saffron chicken seafood vegetables that are served in large shallow so here um, you can have arroz balanchana or the paella negra, which is, of course, a different version also of paella. Then we have the ensaladang chamba. Okay, this is your, this is just your ordinary ensalada with uh, additional ingredients. They just put a right amount of bagoong uh, isda here to have its uh, salty taste. Tinawag nilang chamba because 
sabi ng mga locals, it's just an accident kung paano nila or how did they come up with that distinct taste of their ensalada. So, ensaladang chamba. Then we have the uh, chupaculo, which is a traditional bayad here. It's a cooked snails that are or yeah, served in thick sauce like a broth that is made from squash and coconut. Then we have the sati, satay, um, which is also a or a common breakfast meal for the locals of Zamboanga, made from roasted strips of either beef, pork, or chicken, or even liver. Then we have the pastil. Okay, uh, Zamboangueños has a different version of pastil. Okay, uh, their, their, their pastil is like an empanada, but instead of of pork and vegetables, ang laman naman nito ay rice noodles. Okay? So, uh, if you're going to the other parts of Mindanao, uh, like in Maguindanao, pag nakarinig ka ng pastil or pastel, iba din naman doon. Now, Zamboanga City is your best place if you want to taste or have a taste of the great cuisines of the Moros. Yan. At ayaw mong pumunta sa Sulu, Basilan, or Tawi-Tawi for that matter. So the nearest place or the best place for you to taste this Moro cuisine is Zamboanga City. Yeah. So they have here, they have great restaurants here that serve set of uh, traditional Moro cuisine. And this set is uh, also known as uh, Dulang. Okay. So your Dulang um Contains tiula itum, which is a uh, beef in broth of roasted coconut and spices. You have here the chicken piangang, which is also a chicken marinated and cooked in different spices. You also have here the beef kulma, which is the, lo the local version of curry. The chicken satay, and you have here the fried uh, fish cakes, or what they call the utak utak. Now, there is another version of this uh, tausug set na mas maraming laman. They call it latal. Okay, but the main uh, main tausug dishes like chicken piangang, tiyola itong beef kulma are in there. Now, for um, <coughs> the local pastries of the Moros, you, know, you can experience them through this bang bang set. Okay, bang bang. Okay, which is a set of native pastries okay, from from Sulu Archipelago, from the Damoros, that is best paired with the native coffee as well of Sulu. Yeah, so it includes there your fried uh, banana, you have there the purple rice balls or the putimandi, you have also the daral, which is a crepe but a little moist, uh, there's a little more moisture with a sweet coconut filling, then you have the uh, pangi pangi. Okay, which is a flower rings. Okay, uh, wag kung wag kung magisep ng mas malalim, tinapay puyaan. Okay, ganun lang talaga ang itsura. And we have a pam, which is the native pancake of Sulu. Okay, back to the the uh, uh, traditional cuisine of Zamboanga City. We have their lo loco loco. Yeah, so um, it's also called the Zamboanga rolls. Uh, a snack, um, widely sold in markets and sidewalks in Zamboanga City. Now, if you've been to, but if you've been to Maginda now, meron siyang kamukha din doon, pero iba lang yung shape, triangular na lang ang kanyang shape. Now, for uh, dessert or a snack pa din, you, can, you may also try the Knickerbocker. This is their own version of Halo halo with uh, a lot of sliced fruits with gelatin and of course topped with um, uh, strawberry ice cream. Right? So those are the must try dishes and foods when you visit or your guests would like to visit uh, Zamboanga Peninsula. So let's move on to our top destinations. Of course, Zamboanga City again is the flagship destination here in Zamboanga Peninsula. We're in majority of the destinations actually in Zampen is in Zamboanga City. Then we also have Zamboanga del Norte, specifically the city of Dapitan. Right? So let's move on to the top attractions and let's us watch this video first. <music> Ito na naman tayo sa goal 
na makabiyahe sa lahat ng probinsya ng Pilipinas. Ano kaya gagawin ko sa Zampen? Hmm, may mag-Instagram naman ata doon. What? Ang bilis naman! Nakakabitin! There has to be something more. I need to go back to Zampen. Zampen isn't just about the Vinta, it's more of the vibrant colors of an intricate tapestry of culture and history. Not to mention the emerald forests of Zamboanga del Sur, sapphire waters of Zamboanga del Norte, rosy quartz sand of Zamboanga City, the undiscovered golden bounty of Basilan, and the ruby sunsets of Sibugay. All these can be wrapped into one colorful experience in the diadem of Southeast Asia. With these, I am now inviting you to visit, explore, and experience Zamwanga Peninsula and discover more reasons to visit once again Zampen. Okay. Yeah, so that's the tourism tagline of Zamwanga Peninsula. Once again, visit Zampen. Okay, so let's move on to our top attractions and let's start our lease with our first province, Zamboanga del Norte. Yeah, so starting off our list is the Rizal Park and Shrine. Okay, so commonly tinatawag lang natin siyang uh, Rizal Shrine or Rizal Park. But this is just actually a part and parcel of a bigger Jose Rizal Memorial Protected landscape that covers um, roughly 500 hectares and was established to preserve the memories of Dr. Jose Rizal. So, so nandito yung mga structures na mga ginawa ni Dr. Jose Rizal ng araw. So, may mga na-maintain pa silang mga uh, lima. This is a collection of five reconstructed uh, 
NIPA hats that were used by Dr. Jose Rizal. Ang mga notable uh, NIPA hats dito ay itong nakikita nyo ngayon dito sa inyong screen. That is the Casa Residencia. That is the main house. That is also the biggest one. And it serves as the residence of Dr. Jose Rizal where also his mother and sisters uh, stayed uh, during their visit in Capitan. And the next one, ang isa pang popular doon is the Casa Redonda or the Round House. That is an octagonal uh, stilt house that serves as the quarters of uh, students ni Dr. Rosales. Also, it serves as or it served as a clinic kung naka-exile si Dr. Rosales. Okay, another notable Rizal spot here is the Rizal Landing Site. Okay, with that um, without gleaming gold sculpture okay, along the coast of Santa Cruz Beach in Rapita. So, on the night of July 17, 1892, yon dumaong or dumateng si Dr. Adel sa Dapitan, supported of course by artillery men, mga, mga Spanish guards and all. That's the Rizal landing site. Then we have the Dakak Beach Resort, okay, which is uh, one of the top spot really here in Zamboanga del Norte. So, kung kayo ay lumake na nanunood ng bulaga, malamang ay nakatatak sa inyo itong Dakak. Kasi madalas lumalabas sa commercial ng itulaga ng araw along with the Gloria Fantasy Land. Okay, itong Dakak na ito. Yeah, because, uh, I think one of, one of the owners of the Cock is the Tobiera family, which is also the owner of Tape, na siyang producer ng It Bulaga. Yeah. So, yeah, this is a high-end resort, pero pwedeng mag-day tour ang mga tourists. Then, along the vicinity or along the area where the Cock Beach Resort is located, nandiyan din ang the Cock Adventure Zone. This is your typical adventure park with adventure facilities like zip lines, of course and uh, other facilities. Okay, then we also have the Situbo Falls, which is a, a waterfalls that cascades majestically amidst lush vegetations in um, Zamboanga del Norte. So this is a two-tier waterfalls with a collective height of more than or roughly 100 feet. Yeah. And it has a very, very wide and carved deep na basin. Kaya maganda mag uh, magtatatalon sa, situ, sa basin ng Situ Falls. Now, moving on to Linabo Peak, okay, which is famous for its 3,000 steps. And yes, that's how many steps you need to conquer before you can reach the summit. Okay, nabilang nila kasi konkreto yung steps. So, this one uh, offers you a panoramic view of the city and of course the surrounding landscapes. Another hill, Ayan yung steps ng Lunabu Peak. Okay, next is the Ilihan Hill. Okay, so this is be behind the St. James Church. Okay, papakita ko later. Kasunod nito, St. James Church. That offers also a panoramic view of the city of the Pitan. Okay. Ayan naman ang stairs niya. You know, the good thing with those uh, two peak, Lunabu and uh, Ilihan Hill, no, konkreto yung kanyang steps. Okay, kaya hindi mahirap hindi rin mahirap akyatin. Pwede mag-rest once in a while okay, bago ituloy yung trek. Okay, so this is St. James Church. It may look like an, an ordinary church with no uh, architectural grandeur, but this is an age-old church. Okay, um, significant in history uh, because this is where Dr. Jose Rizal used to attend Mass nung araw, kaya lang ba excommunicated siya ng Catholic Church nung araw so hindi siya nakakapasok sa St. James Church nung siya ay nagsisimba. So lagi lang siyang nakatayo sa labas ng St. James Church. At doon, uh, yung yung spot na laging tinatayuan ni Dr. Jose Rizal, so nilagyan nila ng doon na para marker. Yan. So again, the facade may not be impressive but uh, the ceiling inside the church is quite impressive with that um, ceiling that the paintings in the spiral design uh, ceiling of St. James Church. 
Okay, other than St. James Church, we have the DePaulo Cathedral, which is a must-see church in here with a very unique architectural design, with a very uh, nice spiritual ambience inside, aside from the beautiful design of its facade. Okay, then we have the Dafitan City Plaza just outside St. James Church, which is a beautiful manicured public plaza where we can see another monument of Dr. Jose Rizal. It is said that uh, Jose Rizal also once helped in enhancing this uh, once bare uh, plaza during the olden days. We can also see a lot of old houses within the Pitan. Okay, that's why the city is really a historic one. And if you're looking for fun okay, and uh, theme park attraction in Zamboanga Peninsula, and then your uh, go-to place is the Gloria Fantasyland. Okay? It's quite surprising lang, ano, na, na with, uh, with this quaint and rustic Zamboanga Peninsula region, there's, a, there, there's this theme park in here um, with, with a lifestyle hub, that's the Gloria, uh, Gloria de Dapitan. Okay, so Gloria Fantasyland, ang, ang isa sa prime attraction nila dito is the Grand Parade or the, the Festival of Colors na ginagawa nila sa gabi. Um, which always, parang 9 o'clock something ata yun. They were in, they, they do the parade, there's a firework show. No, yun naman yung kanyang kaibahan sa, sa Enchanted Kingdom. Kasi sa Enchanted Kingdom, hindi yan regular na may parada sa gabi. Okay, but the Gloria Fantasyland has their... Uh, nightly parade, no? parang Disney. Okay, so those are the top attractions in Zamboanga del Norte. Let's head to our next province, Zamboanga del Sur, and let's start off the list with your iconic Pagadian tricycle. Okay, yeah, so Zamboanga del Sur um, is, although it's a laid back, it's a countryside province, more of a laid back experience, but uh, is slowly hitting the ecotourism spotlight no? um, thanks to the, to the natural wonders na makakita dito sa Zamboanga del Sur. So, ayan na nga, pagadian tricycle. Parang pag, pag, pagkasumakay ka dyan sa tricycle na yan, feeling mo katapusan mo na, hindi pa man tumatakbo yung tricycle. No? Mapapakapit ka naman din talaga. Yan. For first-time travelers in Zamboanga del Sur, lalo na sa mga pupunta ng Dipolov, okay, ang um, Ang um, suggested na first stop mo is the Rotonda Park. Yeah, so Rotonda Park, yan is nestled in a hill, that's a Bulatok Hill. Um, and there you have a, you have an option to go horseback riding or just on just stay on the viewing deck, okay? Para makita mo yung scenic view ng Pajares Avenue, okay? So that's the main avenue in uh, the Polog City, overlooking also the Eliana Bay. Okay. So, 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 ito yung basis nila kung bakit nila itong tinawag na ito sa saang dipolog because of the topography of the city. Next is the Mount Palpalan. Uh, Mount Palpalan is a, a wellness spot here in Pagadian. Uh, if you're you want to go up here, but you don't want trekking, uh, you can then just try to try to get it. Uh, hills and mga pigs. 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 Then we have the iconic glasses, so this is Clam, uh, or uh, Clam uh, design in the stage, so that's it. Okay. Uh, then we have also uh, fountain and lights show, fountain and lights, okay. So they said this is the first one in the Manga Peninsula. Okay. Then we have here a group of Port of Thailand. <coughs> Of the coast, Pagadian, which is a popular state. The bigger one, and the or the smaller one. Then we have, they also have a very nice sandbar, the Puting Balas sandbar. Okay. Ah, isang letter T lang pala yan. 
Okay, puting pala, San Barwich, um, Apennines, Barwich means White Island, um, also situated just off the coast, uh, the city of Agadian, okay, which is also a perfect escape to the hustle and bustle of the city. Okay, then they have the Kulakan Falls, okay, one of the best spots or, or ecotourism spot here in Gambonga del Sur, which is stuck in a in a forested landscape, it cascades for just roughly 30 meters, but uh, the, the vegetation and the, la, the, the lush greens adds up the, the whole uh, picture of the So there are the top spots for attractions for the province of Zamboanga next door. Let's move to the third province, which is Zamboanga Sibugay. As one of the youngest provinces in the Philippines, okay? one of the newest ones. Zamboanga Sibugay is not yet in the mainstream Philippine tourism map, but if you are that kind of person looking for the cost of it in the then you should check Zamboanga Sibugay. So, it's not a comprehensive list of Zamboanga Sibugay, but even so, we have attractions for the Namatayo by the way. Okay, and topping our list is the Capital Park. Surely, lahat ng probinsya may capital building, but what makes this capital building special? Of course, the unique architecture. No, so, even if from afar, you can see this building and it, it really looks like an old palace rather than a covered building. Then, uh, just on the side, we're called the Capital Building. So, you can have a breathtaking view of all these surrounding landscapes. It's a hill, kasi, ha? Kapo. There we go. Then, next is the Rotondo Obelisk, which is a huge and a towering landmark in the provincial capital, in the EP. Uh, it was, uh, yeah, 2015, it was inaugurated to, 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 to recognize the existence of the province. Okay, pero talaga ang, ang, ang crown jewel talaga ng Zamboanga City right, is the Buluan Island. So, kung pupunta ka rin lang ng, ng Zamboanga City Bukay and you don't have the ample time to explore the province, head to Buluan Island. So this is a protected spot, landscape here in Iquil, in, 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 in the capital, capital rather. Um, even the surrounding water is a marine protective sanctuary, so there is a wide array here of, of, of marine species, which makes it an ideal site for snorkeling, for diving. You know, surely you will be amazed with the crystal clear waters here of uh, the Bulwan Island. Okay, another island is the Pandilusan Island, which is the they consider as the richest ecological frontier of Zamboanga Peninsula. Also, the surrounding waters is teeming with a lot of full of fishes, uh, marine life, coral reefs, uh, with uh, turquoise blue waters. Kaya maganda rin siyang site for diving in And then we have the Tagbilat Falls. This is the grandest falls of Zamboanga Sibugay with multiple layers and stunning cascades. It looks like a huge curtain that cascades or that, that gives mist you know, that will still blow you away. So surrounding the waterfalls is a lush vegetation that adds up to the rustic view of Tagbilat. Then lastly is the Kabug Mangrove Park and Wetlands. Okay, Sambuanga Sibugay is being groomed as a destination for bird watchers. Okay, why? Because uh, this Kabuk Mangrove Park in Wetlands, puntahan ito ng mga migratory birds that are coming all the way from Russia, Mongolia, northern part of Asia. So if you want to see birds, yung tunay na birds, <laughs> dito tayo sa Kabuk Mangrove Park in Wetlands. So sabi ng mga research, there were at least like 50 species of birds here. That was 75 percent of them were coming from other countries, and they also showcase sustainable, responsible tourism. Isa ito sa mga naging uh, project ng former regional director for the tourism in Mono Peninsula because uh, she herself is a bird watcher. So that's Kabug Mangrove Park. Then. Punta tayo ng Sambuanga City. Okay, start tayo with Onse Islas. 
Nung araw, basa ko dyan once. Once pala. Okay. So, this is a known destination for beachgoers in Zamboanga City. Okay. The group of islands composed of 11 uh, mostly uninhabited islands just off the coast um, the city of Zamboanga. Yeah, so, this is an ecotourism site. Also, practice a sustainable and responsible tourism. Kaya, even before nagka-pandemic, highly controlled ang mga turista <coughs> like only they uh, only allow 200 tourists per day kaya kung hindi ka hindi ka makasama sa sa, sa limit ng on sea islas punta na lang tayo sa Santa Cruz Island which is a more popular one because of the pink beach of Santa Cruz Island but of course tamang timing right timing para makita natin yung pinkness ng shore so other than that, there's a small group of or a community residing here in Santa Cruz Island that offers a mangrove tour. So we're going to go to Jan with the yellow boat. Okay, and aside from and after that, the mga nags serve Jan ng mga sumptuous lunch, mga seafoods and all. So that's Santa Cruz Island. Yan yung mangrove tour sa yellow boat. And we have the Merloke Falls, okay, another popular side trip destination in Tampanga City. Okay, um, actually, they also promote this one as a flagship destination in Zamboanga City, with uh, the highlight of which is this uh, spectacular wall of uh, Chisel and Rock Formation, where, where, where you can climb to enjoy this swimming pool waters. Then we have the Fort Pilar, which is an old Spanish fort. Okay, the La Fuerza Real de San Jose, which was built in 16th century pa. Now it was named after the Our Lady of Pilar, which is the patroness of the Archdiocese of Zamboanga. And it was transformed in an open park, open air park and shrine that commemorates the glorious past of Zamboanga. Then we have the Paseo del Mar, which is also a public park. Um, in here, during the day, during clear skies, you can even view Santa Cruz Island and even Basilan from here um, as well as this is the best spot to catch spectacular sunset but during the most popular show during night time because this place became becomes a lively spot with live bands, food stalls, um, uh, vibrancy is in here during the night. Then we have um, a little over uh, five kilometers away from the city center, the Pasalaka Park. Okay, uh, this park was built by during the American period. It's one of the most Instagrammable uh, places in Zamboanga. Okay. But the, the, the yung, yung, ano ba, yung significant part of Pasalaka Park is the Kama in Baga. Yan, kung nakikita niyo yung mga uh, scatters, cow huts, yan sa opening, yan, yung mga cow huts na yan, Built to commemorate those 24 Philippine Boy Scouts who died in a plane crash on their way to uh, a jamboree in Greece in the fall of 1960s. Yeah. So, kung, if you are from Quezon City or if you are familiar with those streets in Quezon City, the mga scow, lasas, some things, generally, scout in a scout city. Yan, sila din yung mga scouts na kinek o memory ng mga huts na Camp Limbaga in Pasunang in Zamboanga. Okay, next is the Zamboanga City Hall which is considered by the National Historical Commission of the Philippines as a national historical site. Built in the early 1900s, this is a perfect example of Philippine colonial architectural design. So this is one of the many surviving heritage of Zamboanga City. And uh, it was first, it was actually built in to house the United States. Uh, before, before it started, uh, uh, the city hall. <laughs> then we have the Zamboanga City Cathedral, which is a very iconic one. Um, bago -bago lang ito, early 2000s. Uh, it is famous for its candle like design and the marble statue of the Immaculate Conception, which is designed by our national artist. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay. Away from the city center is the Tolaksangay Mosque. Okay. And what on an hour and a half from the city proper. Uh, but it is a massive side trip destination in Zamboanga City because of the historical significance being it's the first center of Islamic propagation in Zamboanga Peninsula. Then we have the Yakan Weaving Village. The Yakans are actually from Basilan, you know, but uh, they made their way also to Zamboanga Peninsula, to the, the mainland. Yeah, so this is a living heritage. You know, it's an indigenous group again. We can actually there, you can watch them actually you can also buy here souvenirs like clothing, table runners, brasswares, mga batik adorned uh, clothing with those old style geometric patterns. Yakan living village. And for shoppers, Kanilar Barter, this is a fast visit market if you wanna shop for um, um, yeah, a lot of items, particularly Malaysian staples. Uh, mi goreng, the, the white coffee, mga murang chocolates, mga malong, yeah, basically pasalubo here in Canada. Now, Zamboanga City over time also um, has made famous some of its homegrown restaurants, including Bay Calma, Alavar, and Dennis Coffee Garden that serves uh, traditional and authentic Moro cuisine. Okay. And let's head to our last unit, Isabella City. Wait for to avoid confusion with the province of Isabella, we also located to Isabella City as Isabella B. Basila. Okay, so in here we have the Malabawi Island at Malabang. We can do actually a day tour, uh, do a day tour to Malamawi Island or Isabella City from Zamboanga. So, so this is the most popular attraction here in Isabella. Um, a stretch of white sand, fine white sand. Then we also have Lampinigan Island. Um, it's a little away from the city proper. And you need here a proper coordination with the tourism office before this. Then the provincial capital, the old provincial capital, is still in Isabella City with a uh, stunning architectural design. Well, a mixture of modern, contemporary, and more of our culture. And lastly, the Mabarakat Mosque, or the Masjid Mas uh, Mas Hamid, okay, or probably this is the most, um, they say it's the most beautiful mosque in uh, Pasida. It's, um, it, it, as uh, the most beautiful mosque in, in Pasida, although the, the Structure is something like it's just plain. Uh, yeah, it's just plain. Lalo na kung nakita nyo na ang mga moss sa maginda na at sa uh, yung pink sa pink moss sa maginda na at yung uh, moss grand moss na kabat. Okay, so there you go. Um, those are the top spots for uh, Zamboanga Peninsula. Now, um, just to give you some update, let me just stop 